Hello and welcome to the first ever Simon Harkness, Mike Elkins and Tom Baper podcast. This is a little introduction about what you can expect from a podcast. So yeah, let's get some introductions done. Hello Tom, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. So I'm very much looking forward to doing this first podcast ever. Good mate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. What, uh, what features are you excited about? Um, I'm really looking forward to Ethnic Takeaway. I think it's <laughs> going to be my favourite. <laughs> Shaniqua in particular will be my favourite. From Hackney. Yeah, more to follow on that, I believe. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. definitely. You don't want to give away everything too soon. Young Michael, are you looking forward to seeing <laughs> Of course I am, Thomas. Um, as the youth of today say, I'm buzzing for it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so just a brief hello, really. This... I think we'll probably be chatting for about half an hour, so if you can bear to uh, stay with us, then uh, then please do. I'll Cute. be lucky to last half an hour, I imagine. You? In all walks of life. <laughs> <laughs> including, <laughs> including foreplay as well. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a little bit hungry. Have we decided on pizza? Um, I think we should. The, the little van is in the village. He's doing well, isn't he? He's there. He's always there. Brilliant. Mm. Oh, if for those of you that... Night? No, just Thursday. Even though it's Tuesday, so just Tuesday. Just Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we will be uh, recording on uh, Tuesday evening, as you probably have just guessed. So, yeah, I think I'd imagine recorded on a Tuesday, um, broadcast and in your ears by maybe late Thursday, if, yeah, if I nice. can be uh, Obviously. be driven enough. To, <laughs> which I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. But, um, but yeah, so pizza, pizza after we've done this, so I think we need to get cracking, don't we? Really. Mm. Indeed, we do. So, Let's so do the. Break- the basics of what the show is all about. It's the three of us talking. Essentially, that, that is it. The that three of us it. being Tom Bayford. Uh, Simon Harkness and at Simon Harkness on Twitter. At Tom Bayford 2011. <clears throat> uh, and Mike Elkins. I'm not going to do a shameless plug for Twitter. <laughs> but uh, Mike Elkins 1986. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if Emma Watson is listening, I did tweet you. So I would appreciate a tweet back. Thanks. Come on, Emma. Like, we... We can make you big as Simon. Carl I was going to say, say we we put the effort in with the tweet, so it'd be really nice if you could give something back to your uh, to your followers. I fancied you since you were twelve. Yeah, yeah. Even I mean, with the short hair, quite. I must I, say. It's a big mistake if you ask me. I, I'm not a big fan of girls with short hair, particularly ones that could then be mistaken for Just a boy. So much potential um, to be a lesbian as well. With huge, short hair. which I'd also quite like to see. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but hi Emma, if you're listening, uh, we'd love it. A shout out and a yeah, or an tweet. accidental twit pick. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my Bob. Oh wait, no. It worked for Paris Hilton. That's all I will say. And I think you could use that. Um. Yeah, you need you need that shameless level of fame. Speak, I, I speak think you do. Agent. Yeah. Um. On 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 the uh, on the subject of Emma Watson, uh, I think something that you can look forward to and something that I think we're going to do now. Is, I like uh, what you did there. Is, yeah, that it's a, a, it's oh, a that beautiful, flowed. smooth that was plug. A link. <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful link into um, to a new film that, that that has been released, I believe, last week, and I had the uh, the pleasure to to go and see it. In each episode of our podcast, we're going to try and review a uh, piece of a piece of art, so a film or a book or a gig that we've been to. Um, just to give our opinions of whether we think it's good, whether we think it's bad, whether we think you should go and uh, see it, read it, listen to it, whatever. It's my turn first, and I'd like to review the film The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I saw this film very recently and thought it was really, really brilliant. It's an adaptation of a book by the same name, which is uh, written by Stephen Chbosky, and it's your typical American coming-of-age film teenage dramas, that sort of thing, where characters, as per usual, explore their past, whilst living in, obviously, their their current situations in preparation for building a better future for themselves. There are three central characters, Charlie, who's the main focus of the film, Patrick and Sam, and they all face different events uh, and stigmas, with circumstances pushing them away from mainstream popularity and towards each other. Charlie is a character who struggled to come to terms with events during his final year at middle school. The film opens with him going through the first days at high school as a freshman. He remains friendless, but he's not a geek, or he's not particularly popular, um, with many of his friends from middle school moving on into more popular circles. Um, But he's a very talented writer. Whilst attending a college football game, Charlie's school life would change, as he was introduced to a stepbrother and stepsister in Sam and Patrick. They decide to take Charlie under their wing and introduce him to people he can relate to 
slightly better. The film itself is very touching. Uh, it's a great piece of filmmaking. And so, like so many other films that have gone before, audiences can relate to generally one character or a group of characters and the situations. But very rarely do I see a film that leaves me wanting to know more about the characters once the film's finished. With this film, I had the massive urge to then go to the nearest bookshop and buy a copy of the book to find out a little bit more about the characters. As always, a book will go a little bit further into explaining characters' situations. The cast are brilliant. Whilst there's the obvious hype of this film, with it being the latest Emma Watson movie, but Logan Lerman, who plays Charlie, does a great job. He plays a character to be highly intelligent, um, probably beyond his years intelligent, yet quite immature and naive in many ways. Ezra Miller, for me, is the standout actor who plays Patrick. He's quite extrovert. It shows him as being supremely confident, generally guiding Charlie through his new experiences. Yet, as we find out throughout the film, he's a very fragile person and he's got some very serious issues that he needs to deal with. Of course, it would be wrong of me not to mention Emma Watson. She plays Sam expectedly very, very well. Uh, she offers a mixture of sort of the sexual attraction with a character who has a few underlying demons that come out throughout the film and possibly the idea of a, uh, a childhood that was taken away from her far too soon. I suppose the greatest compliment that could be paid to her was when we left the cinema, a member of the audience mentioned that we've just seen a film with Emma Watson in, not a film with Hermione Granger. The film doesn't necessarily spoon-feed its audience like a Hollywood blockbuster would, which is great. We're invited to ask questions of the characters, with the majority of these questions remaining unanswered by the filmmakers, leaving it up to us to make assumptions of what happens to these characters. That said, the relationship between the audience and what we see on screen is very strong so the film actually remains quite easy to watch. As far as a rating goes, I'd give this film a really good 8.5 out of 10. It has everything you need for one of those cosy, feel-good films. There's a few twists, there's a couple of moments which pull at the heartstrings a little bit, but all in all, an enjoyable sit-down-and-watch. I'd suggest I was always going to see a film in the cinema first. If you can't get there, then certainly it's worth a go on DVD. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Well, thank you, Mike. That was um, that was brilliant. So, all in all, you you liked it, and I did, I oh. did. It was a great film. Brilliant, very enjoyable. So, very. I are. love watching good films at the cinema. Yeah, I think it's the only place to watch a film. But I'm absolutely gutted that you can't now just take a tenner and have the full works like premiere. That's a very popcorn, good point. Yeah, very drinks, true. I mean, pick and mix. You used to be able to do all in that for a tenner. I, it's true. I was saying it to my mate literally the other day. It, I'm now at an age where I can say, well, it wasn't what I liked in my day. <laughs> I, I went. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I bought a old. cinema ticket for Quite. £2.50. Although, the girlfriend did a uh, an incredible act of uh, lying, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> picked, um, Deceit. Picked the chap behind the, the sweet counter who was selling the tickets and uh, just told him straight, we're students, we've forgotten our student card, give us our tickets, and it worked. So we, got no way. so we got him for six quid, but then that is Chichester, and they are, I think, idiots. But I think if I if we if she didn't blag that, then it would have been like eleven quid or something. Yeah, that's oh, just ridiculous. Dirty. Which, plus a drink, plus a packet of M and M's, peanut M and M's. My grand, say, definitely peanut. my beautiful grand Daphne Bayford, if you're listening, and she is hot. You're not. You're not on the internet. That's fine. I would. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I have not. Just to, <laughs> just to make that very clear, I have not. Uh, my Would gran, sni- <laughs> there's all sorts of swear words <laughs> that have been said there. I love you. <laughs> um, my gran sneaks popcorn into cinema. Oh, really? brilliant! Yeah, she That's puts amazing. it under her jacket because she doesn't want to get doesn't want to get robbed blind. Brilliant. Quote. Brilliant. I think, <laughs> I think that is that is one of my sort of things that I feel most guilty about, but it's something that I feel is a necessity. Taking sweets illegally into a cinema. It's got to be done. Uh, but I always feel really bad when you approach yeah. the old, <laughs> when you approach the either the, the 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 goofy film student. I was a film student, so that's a perfectly <laughs> legitimate statement. Um, who's there to collect your ticket? Yeah. You approach him. You immediately think he's going to sort of go all airport security. <laughs> yeah. 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 Be like, Open your bag, please, sir. Excuse, excuse me, mate. But it's that... only four Twixes. <laughs> four. Well, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, mate. Can you step to one side? <laughs> 
You're not coming in with that miles per hour, pal. Uh, <laughs> well, I sort of. Like, I always feel like I am going to get thrown out. I was told if you go in with your own suite, then mm. they won't give you entry, which I think is ridiculous. Quite. I was like sneaking in for a fifteen as well. That's always scary. I haven't Did done that. that for a good eleven years. I've <laughs> yeah, shown my age. Though, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. The first film I ever got into underage was uh, Hulk, which was a twelve, and I wish I hadn't bothered. It was <laughs> pretty awful. I imagine. Just when I was fourteen, six foot and eighteen stone, <laughs> I, they didn't really, they didn't really raise an eyebrow when I, no, I when imagine. I tried to get in for a fifteen. But still, <laughs> I wore you an, felt as if at any point you were going to get ID turned away and embarrassed in front of all your friends. I wore an actual shirt and a lot of my dad's uh, aftershave. Like, hey, I'm a twelve-year-old kid, man. <laughs> hey, what can I say? Amazing. I think my first proper memory, full memory of the cinema, was when I went to see Jurassic Park, and I must have oh, been yeah. like eleven, and I was scared shitless. <laughs> really? yeah. Yeah. I had a big, like, full peak cricket cap on, and every time something, <laughs> something came on the screen, I'd hide it's behind like, that's it. That's got to be a joke. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, is Brett Lee? But, <laughs> but, but the worst part What's of it. What's this fat Brett Lee? Doing? I was there. I was there with with someone else who was my age, and we were both hidden comfortably behind this massive hat. And their younger sister, who was really young, was laughing throughout. Um, oh God! See, la- no, I don't like I don't like laughter in a film unless it's a comedy. But surely, if it's funny, it ruins it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, laughter through my sister's keeper would be a bit out of a bit out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> On the subject, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. But on the subject of cinema prices, I have come up with an idea where I like to stream online, and then I decide whether it's worth paying eight quid. Eight quid is a lot of money, and if you're if you're taking your girlfriend out, you've obviously got to pay for her. Orange Wednesdays, Orange Wednesdays, it's, it's don't brilliant, mess about. Isn't it? Don't yeah. mess about. But if you're busy on Wednesday, so you know, sure. I think try before you buy it. It's perfectly legitimate, isn't it? Because you wouldn't go and buy some clothes. Just put them. No, you course, generally no. you'd like to try yeah. your clothes on, wouldn't you? Definitely. And at How the do end, you feel about that, babe? Yeah. You just suck it in, so you just yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Fits, mum. <laughs> that was suck in. <laughs> two X's or three X's. It's all the same. For Tom. Yeah. <laughs> two kisses. Oh, sorry, two kisses. Okay, gotcha. Two kisses out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Accidental. But yeah, I think it's perfectly same with music. Same with music. Yeah. Yeah. If I hear a song, I will generally go onto YouTube first. Listen to it, and if I like it, I will then pay some hard earned. I thought you were going to say illegally download there anyway. <laughs> I've never, never illegally download anything, Tom. Ever. Completely against that, by the way. It's illegal <laughs> and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, you can, uh, if anyone is found to be illegally downloading this podcast, we will come and, well, uh, cut bits off you. And possibly. Even- Oh my Ooh, God! We'll Jesus cut, we'll Christ! We might do. get <laughs> slicing. We'll cut that out because yeah. yeah. thank you, Simon. That's all wonderful. Do you care to put something else in that I can that I can then cut in place? Dirty. Again, keeping on the uh, the, the the idea of film. I was thinking the other day as I was slaving away in a uh, in a classroom as I do <laughs> Monday to Friday. Oh, it's such a hard life. It's terrible working nine working till half three. <laughs> Not it's till not. five, three thirty. <laughs> that would ruin. The, that would ruin. That would ruin the flow of that song. It would. It really Looking would. Looking nine till three thirty. Yeah. <laughs> We've added lunchtime. <laughs> On and came, if I do playground duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We. Uh, it was in a PE lesson, and um, we were playing dodgeball because it was raining, and I suddenly had this urge that I really wanted to be Peter Lafleur from the film Dodgeball. <laughs> hey Lafleur. I don't know why, because I think it's the it's the fact that he's he's a bit of a waster, but his heart's in the right place. He's got a business that's just not working, and it ends up he kicks some ass playing dodgeball and gets a really fit girl who's actually bisexual, which I think is probably the dream for most. That's what we all want. Um, gets some it's money cool. out of it and knows knows a bloke called Steve who's a pirate. Arr, it's exactly. <laughs> so I think for me, I I always thought that I wonder who. Let's do my favorite quote from dodgeball. You can. Favourite quote from Dodgeball is, I ain't crazy and I ain't a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. That or you're about as useful as a cock flavoured lollipop. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> but so it got me thinking, out of, uh, for you two guys, what, what film characters would you see yourself as or like to be? Okay, uh, mine. Well, I thought about it long and hard and it would have to be Matt Damon's character from The Departed. Oh. Because... Please tell us why. It's a way he plays everything so well right until the ending. I'm not going to give the ending away. It's the way he infiltrates and essentially 
runs with police, having been. Ah, uh, it's very difficult to explain. Having, having been employed by a gangster to go in and make sure he doesn't. Well, get you caught. have all he has. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like you're speaking yeah. from experience. Yeah. Well, I must, when I was employed by a major gangster, yeah. in my in my days in the mafia, I found, <laughs> and I found his um, perception incredibly inspirational. Oh, it's a lovely place this time of year, and I'd love to holly that. Holly, oh no, oh, oh, no. It's terrible. Start that again. From oh, the... yeah, oh. we're gonna keep that in just to shame him. So yeah, mine would be Matt Damon's character from The Departed, cool. simply because of the way he plays it. Who hasn't wanted to infiltrate the police and just completely threw him over? Yeah. Amazing. Fair enough. So how about you then, Tom? Uh, if I were to be any character from any film, it'd have to be without any shadow of a doubt, Mike Bassett. From Mike Bassett, England manager. Uh, nice. I haven't seen that film in ages. <laughs> Much that better than Roy are... Hodgson could ever be putting on a stupid accent. He was proper, true, proper English and brilliant. And he would love to play a four-four fucking two. Brilliant. Nice swearing as well. I like it. I think the, the, the psycho, the psycho <laughs> chat in yeah. that film is brilliant. When <laughs> right lads, let's fucking have it. <laughs> when they're at the um, we have a kid like that in our rugby academy <laughs> called Tom Gregory, who the other day put, Hi, a scr- put a scrum cap on. The girls' football team were walking past, all minging. Oh, okay. okay. Girls' football team walk past, obviously trying to impress them. Gets a steel fire escape door and headbutts it <laughs> as hard as he can. He's our psycho. He went, Come on, boys, let's have it. <laughs> when the opposition weren't even there, or nobody was really listening to him, and he just went bang like that across the steel door. Uh, Totten College, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great place to send your kids, by the way. Um, it's a lovely area as well. Smashing area. I'd love to holiday there. Yeah, and there's the, definitely no one there except her. The Asda's fantastic. I hear. I've it thought that many actually. times. Where I That's a really to go good cooked breakfast, though. What Asda? Yeah. In the morning, really good. Tap Morrison's do a crack. I can't say I've been to Morrison's for a while. Right? There's an obvious shout out here, lads, and it's um, Tesco's Calf. Tesco's Calf, where I think many a relationship has blossomed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I'm not going to name names. I mean, I was thinking that just the other day, even when I ever get a girlfriend, the first place I would take her would be to Tesco Cafe. I think so. Would you pay the whole bill? Half the bill? I'd split the bill and make her pay for her own pudding. That's what I would do. <laughs> nice. See, I don't think I wouldn't go for a pudding. I'd have a starter, maybe a, I don't know, a, a bread roll. roll. A, a bread, bread roll <laughs> with yeah. some butter. Bread roll with packet butter, yeah. Perfect. And then a main of probably dry peas, yeah, yeah. chips, yeah. and yeah. a really small piece <laughs> of <laughs> a, as well, a though. staple yeah. of the modern diet. Exactly. And then I'd maybe wash that down with a ginger ale or some sort of, <laughs> maybe an orange juice. <laughs> But then. How middle class did you sound like? <laughs> <laughs> ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, uh, the I think that. For me, if if you're taking someone there on a date, the absolute deal sealer would be then take her down to the reduced to clear puddings. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you think you could you could pick up a I don't know a cherry pie for twenty five p. Come on, love, come uh, down yeah. here. With me. Come exactly. On. I'm gonna call Hannah my cherry pie from now on. Oh, that's <laughs> awkward. I'm gonna pick up my cherry pie. <laughs> or one of those like chocolate souffle things, which has gone out of date for about four weeks. <laughs> but yeah, it's just there but still there selling at 39 pence someone picked it up two days ago and didn't got sort of halfway around realised they didn't want it and put it by the tuna no one's picked it up yet so he's oh I'm awful for doing that six at feet I do all the time it's, I, all the time I dumped half the roast chicken next to the cheese the other day uh, I've stolen a meatloaf from Tesco before what you know the Tesco deli bit yeah I got a meatloaf and roast potatoes put in the same packet and because of their auto scan system I wouldn't say you stole them. You forgot to pay for it. You just weren't honest. Yeah, deliberately forgot to pay for them. Mm. Mate, times are hard and everything, but it says something. <laughs> when, when you have to steal meat meatloaf. Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> meatloaf is good, though. Not not the singer. He's generally all bad. Best on an album of all time. It might be, but it's still crap. Is it really? Yep. Bat out of hell. Yeah, it's still in the top 40. That doesn't surprise me. It's not still in the top 40. I yeah, bet it is. Kevin, the... Kevin Hopkins still listens to you. It's still in the top 40 album. Hello, Kevin. That that can't be seriously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure no one buys that. If you're listening, viewers, boycott and listeners. <laughs> <Me. sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I repeat, long him off. <laughs> <laughs> He's had his moment in the sun. <laughs> and if he was meatloaf, then it would obviously Let be him die gracefully. <laughs> that was terrible. I feel a bit harsh actually because I I was brought up listening to meatloaf. Oh, brilliant for his time. But why is he still in? The, well, Oasis. 
What's still in Morning Glory? Is that still in there? I'm not. I'm not convinced it is. Liberty, absolute joke. I think absolute joke. If Meatloaf, Bat Out of Hell, one good song on it, and what's the story in Morning Glory? Oh mate, it. that is an incredible. It's album, the best mate, album I've ever heard in my life. It's I would good. say it's probably my favourite album of all time. I don't know. I was never a big big fan. To be honest, I I, I find Oasis okay. I like some of their songs, but Liam Gallagher for me is a complete. <laughs> and. Uh, and that is enough to put me off listening to that band. Yeah, yeah. I was always a blur carried kid his anyway. brother so far, and they. I, I think his brother's better. No, as in as in Noel's carried Liam so far. Oh, Miles, and you can tell by their 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 new band. Yes, Noel yeah, Gallagher's yeah. And, yeah. and Noel Gallagher and his High Flying Birds are a genuinely good band. Yeah, yeah. and BDI and just have... BDI are just jank. But the jank. thing is, yeah, amazingly, it was the actually goons as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will be I. The best thing about <laughs> best thing about what was that, that? was a generic <laughs> mank uh, Im- impression. It wasn't hey. the best. <laughs> Manchester's <laughs> a lovely area, and I love what they've done with the place. I've been to Accrington before to watch Salisbury City play football. I know you have. Stanway, best atmosphere I've ever. Experienced. You've said that before, yeah. And also the best meat pie I've ever tasted. Mm. Oi, oi. And They're... everything, honestly, everything is a pound cheaper. It is, isn't it? That is the mm. one thing yeah. I do love about the north. Pick up a bottle of Coke for forty-eight pence. You can there. I do. And you get a Freddo for fifteen pence as well. See, I remember when Freddo's were. Five. Let that be known. I remember when they were five p. <laughs> People in Manchester five p buy Freddo's. When I was at school, Freddo's were five p. Yes, we get a petition going. Lower the price of, of a Freddo. Yeah, I mean, hashtag piss. Pornhub really went well. So I think this could this could be it. It could be. I think hashtag Pornhub got three hashtags from... Three, we got three. Did you well, know I, well, I, I, I did one. I did one. One of your friends did one. She, she did, yeah. Very, so thank you, Amy. Um, I know you actually wanted to listen to this, so thank you for retweeting hashtag Pornhub. Very so funny. We, so had we got four, four so it really got off the ground. That, so, so. so how about now we'll do hashtag Freddo and try and get Freddo's or reduced pray, in pray price. Pray for Freddo's. Pray for Freddo. Uh, yeah. yeah, hashtag pray, pray for... F- uh, oh, dear. You. Hash- Freddo's. Hashtag pray for Freddo. Yeah, difficult to say. I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think we'll, we'll get a Facebook campaign going and maybe a soundtrack to the campaign and then push for that song to be number one at Christmas. Oh, Freddo. Would it go like that? Just or? like that. Okay, right, good. And we've got our own studio. We can record it. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad I did that. Cool. Each week on the old podcast, we try and look into the news and pick a story that we find interesting or frustrating or whatever really or both and, yeah both interesting and frustrating or uplifting um, as well i do like i suppose yes. yeah, 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 really, yeah there's not enough of that going i think we should have a happy days. hour in our shall we half but, hour long podcast our, <laughs> half an hour. A happy minute i think we should have okay well will we'll, we'll be play a, a nice royalty free song yeah, yeah a soothing uplifting. a soothing jazz edition to porn song i'm mean, okay. actually uh, a fact about podcasts we always do the podcast with some burning incense so that Increases your yeah. what flavour do we have tonight? Uh, we are on vanilla at the moment. Oh, you can really, can really smell that. Yeah, it came from Thailand. Oh, so just smell the you have it from Bangkok. I've got a lot. I've got that's that's, that's half. Of what wow. I I, should we auction off as a as a listener? Okay. Uh, the first person to guess which market in Bangkok the incense that I'm currently burning came from will win a packet of the said incense. Just email your answers, please, to studio.podcasting at gmail.com. Oh, wow. Great link. I thought there. I did well, well there. <laughs> That's our first competition. Do yeah. you have an A, B, C or D option? Or do uh, you really not want to give any away? Uh, I could, but I only know the name of one market in Bangkok, which is the market I purchased it in. So it would just be an A. What was that market called? Or an A option. <laughs> and to be honest, if we were to make it up, it would probably sound very uh, offensive Made up, and yeah. racist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The cream of some young gay or something. Like that. <laughs> 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 I love that. Anyway, we've completely sidetracked. Back to the news. The, Back the original to the news. story. <laughs> Ashley Cole <clears throat> tweeted about the FA. Hashtag bunch of twats. Get yes. it trending. Um, tweeted about the FA. And we thought, are the FA actually, as he said, yeah. and a bunch of? I think they've shown times when they are a bunch of twats and be a bunch of twats really I mean, <laughs> is what they've done there i see okay i disagree with the majority of decisions they've made like yeah. the major decisions they've made recently mm-hmm. for example the most recent one being robin van persie on Yoan kabai oh the, the elbow that was heated. unbelievable he looks at him elbows him in the face and the referee says that's not violent conduct on and a they... saturday night you'd be banged up and then yeah. The yeah, yeah, of course, the yeah of course and even on a saturday afternoon playing football 
You do that in Oceana be, yeah. on, a, on a Thursday. And that happens in Oceana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get yeah. taken out by <laughs> a seven-stone security guard. Exactly. <laughs> Spot the Frenchie. Bang. Wallop. And We like, do love the French. We do. Sorry, French. It's also a lovely area, and I'd love to holiday there. I have holiday I have there. A, yeah. Lovely, I have a little pleasure going we're, to France. We're shooting a film in France, aren't we? We are. We have a film. Script. Written. Rugging, ready rugging to film. Bastard. Yeah, quite. Yeah. I've said bastards, yeah, so you can edit that out as well. No, we can keep that in, isn't it? We'll, we'll keep bastards in, I'll just leave it out. Probably, isn't it? <laughs> but, um, as, a, <laughs> as a Newcastle fan, uh, I find it incredible, really, that he's managed to get away with it. If that had been the other way around, all right, so goodbye, or no, Tiote. Tiote has done that to Wayne Rooney. I mean, he should be congratulated. He, he, would, he would be, <laughs> if they patted him on the back, but he well would have had about harder. a six match ban. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, easily and a massive fine. Comfortably. Just seems like a get out of jail free card to say it's not violent conduct, doesn't it? It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean what what was he doing? I think spineless is the uh, But I think that's yeah, that's one of like the minor decisions. Yeah. Yeah. The major yeah. ones like you're t- talking John Terry and Jerry Barton, etc. Yeah. yeah. It's just double standards all the time, isn't it? If yeah. you are a face within the England team, yeah. you will probably get a little rap on the knuckles, but that will be that. Look yeah. at Jerry Barton. He's not in the England side, and he's the the scapegoat and the full yeah. boy for pretty much anything that happens in the Premier League. Now, yeah. obviously, the French league. It'll be interesting to see how how he gets on over there, and I wish him wish him all the best. Really, yeah. I mean, but I think Joe Barton is probably one of the best English midfielders we have. When he when he needs to perform, he performs. Mm. Although a lot of people probably wouldn't like to admit it as well, he probably it'd probably be at least in the England squad. But I would suggest that he's just not liked by. Not only the FA, but also the the, the, the other fellow professionals, the, the other yeah. professionals, the John Terry's of this world, the Frank Lampard's, the Stephen Gerrard's. Yeah. I can't imagine they want to associate <clears throat> with him. No. What I would say on the whole debate is that um, Joey Barton got what was what was it? He got a twelve, 12 match ban, twelve match ban for putting a little head on Sergio Aguero and causing a massive scene. He's always going to get a red card for what he did to Tevez. And then walks off, tries to take one of the Man City players with him, or so he says. Um, gets a twelve match ban and a little fine for that, and ends up going to France, which is fine. I completely agree with the FA banning him, but then John Terry then receives a four match ban and a two hundred and twenty thousand pound fine mm. for his. So Joey Barton, what the FA have said there, is if Joey Barton were to uh, racially abuse, yeah, were to yeah. go up to your Mario Balotelli's and your Yaya Torres and said. What lots yeah. of bleeps, yeah. Yeah. lots yeah. and lots of yeah. bleeps. Bad thing. Yeah, we do not agree with racism. No, completely. Oh, uh, com- right. We completely disagree <laughs> with it. If anything. Um. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just to clarify. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we are very against. But racism. yeah, would he have got your four matches, or would he have been burnt at the stake for being a witch? Yeah. Which essentially yeah. is yeah. what they do. Yeah. Um, and how the FA can find someone? I mean, I don't. Like John Terry, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, but still, that's that's even still. But John either Terry's... way, at the end of the day, a court of law has found John Terry yeah. not guilty of racially abusing Anton Ferdinand. Yet the FA have found him guilty. Yeah, so yeah. therefore, shouldn't they be doing murder trials? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like they're quite clearly yeah. above the above yeah. the law. A little there's, bit. there's been a uh, traffic collision. Okay, yeah, uh, get the FA. Yeah, we need to know what is going on. What we on really here. need here is a football association. We do, yeah. <laughs> to get Trevor yeah. Brooking out too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, darling. Southgate, come here. <laughs> oh, Gaza. Although, Gaza Southgate. although all this FA bashing, I'm pleased that they've now opened a centre for English football. Yeah, marvellous. St George's Park. £100 million pounds on St George's Park, I believe it is. To be honest, if we win the World Cup or the Euros, then it is money well spent. We're not going to win the World Cup or the Euros. I don't think we, we will for a very long time. No, but the, but the kids who are going to this... Having a centre, it proves yeah. it works. The English cricket, their their performances picked up when they started using Loughborough as a centre of excellence mm. with all of their youth size training in yeah. the same place. And play. we won a World 2020 that got nearly no coverage. Exactly. Which I thought was embarrassing. It was embarrassing, and then given the size and of the And then suddenly when we do badly in the World 2020 this year... They're all over it. It gets back page mm. news. But it's the same in football. They get on their back. I mean, I'm sure... Heaven forbid we lose to, or even don't smash, is it San Marino San next Marino, week? San Marino, yeah. If we yeah. don't smash San Marino by at least 18 goals... Well, then you'll see Roy Hodgson, Roy Hodgson lynched at the nearest goalpost. They will goal be post. calling for him to be sacked, which is ridiculous. I mean, if we'd love to hear your side, actually. Do you agree with a lot of the FA's decisions? It would be great to hear from you. Uh, studio.podcasting at gmail.com or 
comment on our blog at www.hardcore-chitchat, all one word, .blogspot.co.uk. Or even, if you don't want to do that, there is always our Twitter page, which you can find us at. Well, if you go to the blog, there's a button on there. Click on the button, you'll go through to our Twitter page and uh, ping us a tweet. And of course, anyone that ends, I think anybody that ends, the uh, and ends their tweet with pray for Fredo. Pray that for, was it. <laughs> pray for Fredo. <laughs> We've forgotten. Brilliant. We'll get. I will. I will personally go and buy a Fredo and post it to them. Yeah, and we might even get a T-shirt from them. We it might. Depends, it depends on funds, really, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But I can't guarantee if I Lost do post the Fredo that one, the Fredo will be whole, or two, won't have melted. But yeah, it's <laughs> the thought that counts. I suppose. A Fredo wrapper exactly, yeah. is what you'll be yeah. receiving. Yes, <laughs> a <laughs> squidgy mess. <laughs> <laughs> don't say we don't give you anything. <laughs> So I think it's about time that we say cheerio. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you very Goodbye. much for listening. Uh, we love you and we look forward to speaking to you again next week. At yeah. Tom Bay for 2011. Uh, uh, shameful. Shame at Simon Hartman. Ah, oh, unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just at me. <laughs> yeah. uh, hashtag pray for Freddos. Hashtag Pornhub as well.